Right, welcome back. Watch out. Um, in the absence of anything meaningful to do in the garage today, I just want to do a little reveal and show you what we're doing with the Scrambler. Now, a little while ago, sold the Bandit of Doom, and it's gone to a very good friend of mine. He's happy with it. Everything's cool. Now, the money for that sat there for a while, considered a project, considered whether buying into another pile of something and building it into something else. But honestly, four projects down the line, I've just had enough. I'm going to take a year off doing projects. They're not brilliantly successful as far as the channel's concerned. They don't teach a great deal to their fellow riders. They don't pass on much and they cost an absolute fortune. Buying the parts, the materials and the rest of it is just never ending. They're a money pit and I can't afford it at the minute. So rather than throw all that money that I got for the Bandit into another bike that's going to cost even more, I've decided to invest it in something a little bit more radical in the Scrambler. Now I bought the Scrambler some 18 months ago, and I love it to bits. It's absolutely great. I love the sound it makes. I love the ride. It's just bonkers to ride around the streets. But the one thing I wanted to do with it when I first got it, and I promised myself a long-term investment, really long-term, and I've now had it 18 months, and this is the time to, I think, do that. The money's right. The money was there from the sale of the other bike. The investment is there. It can be made, and I think it's time to move into it, and it will really, really transform the bike. Now, what it is, it results this. First of all, look at the back wheel on these. I've always had an issue when I bought this. The back wheel on the Scrambler is 130 sections, 130 section wide, something like a five inch tire, just is a little bit wimpy. I've always thought they're a bit weedy. They have a 19 inch wheel on the front, and yet you could say, why don't you buy a Bonneville SE? Because they look a bit chunkier on the back, and they're a 17 inch, cool. But for me, personally, I wanted the 270 crank in the Scrambler. And that's the same reason I didn't get a Thruxton. I love the Thruxton as well, but it just doesn't have that engine that I wanted. That engine sound with the 270 crank sounds more like a B-twin and also the high level pipes. So those two things you can't change. You can't change the engine on a bike, it's just, you just can't. Obviously, but you can change wheels and bits and pieces. So that's what I've done. First of all, I've changed the front wheel, a big fat 19 or a big tall 19 inch. We've been to uh, a firm that we know of in Devon, Devon Wheel Company, and got myself this one. Now this is the front rim, um, gone for black because I think it matches the bike a bit better. They're anodized black, they're a forged rim made from an extrusion, then curved and forged, they're not a billet rim, and that makes them that much stronger. Stainless spokes and wonderful, wonderful talon hubs. Talon hubs are just about as good as it gets. Anybody who knows their off-road bikes, dirt bikes knows that a talon hub is the last word in, in strength and quality of motorcycle hubs. Same go for the Dirt Star DID rims, Japanese DID rims. They're a, they're a kind of custom wheel, really, and they're built by Devon Wheel Company just to order. You tell them what bike you've got, what size you want, what width you want to go, and literally they custom build them to how you want. So I've gone for 17 inch on the front, which drops that front end down. Obviously 19 inch is two inches higher, but that's overall. The axle only changes by an inch. So it's gonna drop the front of the bike by an inch. It's gonna speed up uh, the steering in corners, make it a little bit more aggressive, which is much more like Penny's bike is. And I really want that for it. And obviously I've got my favorite tires. The old Continental TKC 80s, I absolutely love them. Um, you know, there we are, if you're interested. 120, what are we going for? 120, 70, 17. This pretty much is the profile of tyre that you'll get in any, any, any Japanese bike today, to be honest, and many others, Japanese, you know, British, whatever. These things are, this, this particular tyre profile has been deemed a long time as the best. Even the early Honda Fireblades that had a 16 inch wheel, a lot of people want to put the big 17 on, go that bit bigger. It's just the optimum size of rim for the front and that will make it handle a great deal better. That's not the best of it though, the best of it is the rear wheel. That's the front, got that one, and the rear, stick around, stay tuned, here it comes. <laughs> There's the rear. Now, that, I love it, that is a beast. Absolutely love it. Same old, same old. You've got a talon hub in the center. Big, beefy, chunky billet machined out of a solid block. That's absolutely cool. Same rim, uh, 17 inch, but I've gone for a five inch rim. Now, you, I wanted a 180 tire, but you can't fill it in. It just doesn't work. Five and a half and 180 is the size of the back of your bandit. Uh, just about every sports bike, unless it's the big, heavy stuff. So that has had to go down one. I had to go to a five inch and a 170 tire, but with the TKC80 tyre, these big aggressive novels, it looks bigger than a 180. It does, obviously. If you measure the, the width of a 180 across there, it's actually the same width as this because of the size of these novels on here. So I love that to bits. That's absolutely going to transform the back end. Try and get a look at the back. And there you go. Put that down there. Look at the difference straight away. That weedy little 130 against that. It's going to make the back end look awesome. It really is. Obviously, the back end mudguard is going to be a bit narrow, so I'll probably take that off, get a tail tidy. Uh, from Motone, they do a really cool little tail tidy. We've got one of those on the way soon too. And when that's all put together, it's going to look awesome. I reckon, what do you reckon? It's cool. It does look cool, doesn't it? Now, money-wise, 
you're going to spend a lot of money on these. I, I'm going to put a link underneath to Devon Wheel Company so you can have a look for yourself. It's not a cheap business, it's not. That's why these wheels have re represented the investment, have put all the money from the bandit into these. It's a big radical investment, it's a big radical jump for the scrambler, it's going to really transform the look of the bike. It's going to jump it forward a lot. It's alright bolting farples on and different mirrors and different indicators, that's one thing. But doing something monstrous like that, changing the bike, it's going to look awesome. It really is. Now, the problem is I can't do it yet. Oh, by the way, I just want to show you this. Um, what they do at Devon Wheel Company, they'll do these kind of hidden spokes. You can't undo them or do them up. And the actual sides that you normally get that you put a spanner on is on the inside. Now they can also supply these tubeless, it must be worth saying this. Now if you want them tubeless, you can have them tubeless. They put little seals on the end of each one of these and it does increase the price by I think nearly £200, it's quite a lot and I didn't have that in the budget so I've gone for tubes to make it a bit cheaper so I can afford them. Tubes I'm happy with, it's not a problem. Um, many bikes have tubes, these currently have tubes from Standard. And for what it's worth, I went to Triumph, I made a phone call and I said to them, what will it cost to buy two rims, Standard factory rims with the zinc, rusty spokes that corrode in a year and the, the, the rims themselves that rust because they're only plated, what would it cost? They're actually £200 more than a pair of these. So go figure, honestly. If you're going to buy some wheels for your bike, don't go to Triumph and buy the factory ones. Buy themselves custom made. And they're better rims. They're better in the sense of quality and integrity. So that's pretty cool. Now, don't have the time to fit these now. It's been a great day. We've been out with the uh, Idiot Collective today into Bristol uh, to Fowler's to have a fantastic meet and it's been awesome fun. It's 6pm now, just got home, don't have time to fit them. I've got to get some Loctite for the new bolts that are going to hold the discs on and stuff and it will be the next video up hopefully of fitting the wheels in this. I absolutely can't wait. It's going to look cool, isn't it? Andrea, cool. Yeah, awesome. I reckon. Okay. So there we are, I'll put a link underneath if you want to have a look at Devon Wheel Company. Excellent guy, he really is. Lovely little one-man band. He operates from a little stone barn in a tiny little village down in Devon. I kind of love that. That's typical what we're about. We've said this like Motone and tech and all the rest of it, supporting British companies, and that's the right way to go. Okay, there we are. Anything else, Ben? That's it, thank you. Sorry we can't fit them now, but they'll be in the bike shortly. We'll do a little fitting video, and they are going to look the business. Take it as you ride safe. See you soon.